Hi, everyone. I uh, hope you enjoyed the session so far. So it's like the way Philip said, it's an informal session and I had to fill up some um, other presenter space. So I'll be talking about the education newsletter and why you need to start uh, submitting your stories, why we need to start hearing from you, why you need to start creating visibility for the work that you do in education. So um, this morning, while Shani was giving a keynote speech, she made mention of some external challenges that we face, right? And one of them was the lack of awareness and then lack of recognition of the work that we do in education by stakeholders, people that are not within the wiki cycle. So now, uh, one of the solutions to that is the EduWiki newsletter. So I'll try to... Okay. So I want to show you what it looks like and also kind of explain some of the steps that you can go about to publish your work on the education newsletter. Okay. Okay, so for every month, we get people who carry out uh, wiki edu related activity to share their stories so that uh, the global community can also like learn from some of their uh, ops, can also learn from their best practices and also like uh, adopt some of uh, the programs that they've carried out like and uh, these are some of the stories that was published for this this month. So we have uh, Arts Plus Feminism, Filipinas, ad Advocacy on Women Empowerment. We also have Call for Participation. I, okay. We also have... Okay, so we have call for participation, high education survey featured on the uh, wiki education newsletter. We have the editor turn on Serbian Wikipedia on the occasion of Edu Wiki Week. Now, uh, for most people they, that are not uh, familiar with the Edu Wiki newsletter, they might not get to know some of these interesting activities that have been happening across different countries. And uh, you only get to see some of these uh, activities featured on the education newsletter. So it's a kind of a periodical that we share monthly for people who work in the education, who have um, like carry out programs related to education to also kind of feature their stories so that we can also get to learn more about what you do and uh, help to create more visibility and recognition for your for your activities. So this is one of the solutions to uh, um, to curb the uh, challenge of lack of awareness, right? Because if we can feature your story, if we can feature your activity on the wiki education newsletter, then it makes it a lot easier for people to know that yes, we are doing something, and also like get more understanding about how they can. Um, align their education activity with uh, the wiki media programs and projects, right? So uh, we usually have some um, guidelines for people who want to contribute to this newsletter. So I'll... Ch okay, <laughs> thank you. So if you would like to also like see uh, this website, you can just go on your laptop and search for EduWiki newsletter, or you just search for um, Wiki Education News. So it takes you directly to this page. And then uh, to get, to see examples of the education 
newsletters, the articles that we've published for a specific month, you can just click on end headlines. Like it takes you directly to uh, the list of stories that we've published for the month. Now, if you click on this newsletter or you click on submit your article, it takes you straight to a box where you can then like impute the name, the title of your article. So most times we always like that. The title of your article reflects the activity that you've carried out. And uh, okay, you're just trying to do a draft. So this is where you impute the title. And then uh, if you want to start publishing your newsletter in the drafts, you can just, once you've identified the title, the next thing you want to do is you click on draft your newsletter article. So, but before then, it's always advisable that you read the instruction. Can you go back? <laughs> yeah. So, we have the publication guidelines. So, for most people who don't know what is being accepted or like how do they align what they have carried out, their activities with the newsletter, it's always advisable that you read through uh, this content. Now, why do we write newsletter posts? If you read through, you see the education newsletter will focus on sharing your ideas, stories, success, and challenges. It will help us learn from each other and celebrate each other's successes. So we want to also learn from you why we celebrate uh, the successes of the projects or activities that we've carried out. So now, if you read through this content, you get more insight into how to write a good newsletter post and how you can also like prepare the in the news section so we have so many resources here outlined to help you develop a good newsletter post that we can share now and uh, these are newsletter publication how to publish uh, gather the article copy edit the article put together the publication post the newsletter and then what we do is we'll help you distribute the newsletter so, and uh, we have deadlines. So for every, um, we make our request on the 10th of every month. So if you have plans to like uh, um, share your story of attending what you have learned from this conference, then it's a good thing that you start developing a draft for what you want us to feature. Then uh, the last date for community to submit is always 20th of every month. And then uh, we get to publish on the um, presently we publish on the 26th of every month so like we have extended the dead the deadline for publication from 24th it's now 26th so we we had to extend it because we felt like people also um, most people tend to submit their stories towards the tail end of the month so we would like to also cover wide uh, wide stories like we will we want more stories to be featured so we had to extend the dates so uh we have the education newsletter templates what um silas was um trying to like show us before we went back on the guidelines right so this is what it looks like at the end of the publication you can okay can you go back okay yes Yes, so uh, I would like it to be practical. What are some of the stories that you have that you want to share? Can anybody just, maybe you have an idea of something you want to publish. And then, even though you don't have like the drafts now, we could just start with the title. Anyone? Okay. Uh, actually, uh, uh, f uh, from July, I am going to start a uh, educational program in a local school. So as a, just as a being a Wikimedian resident, so I'm uh, going to start that project. So how can I uh, do or publish this kind of uh, article into this? Yeah. Okay. So the first thing you want to do is get a title and then uh, come up with a draft for your story. So it could be that you want people to be aware of the program that you are recently starting. So you don't need to like execute the project before you submit your stories or activities to the newsletter 
It could be that you want to introduce us to that program or you want to announce an event. You can also use the newsletter to do that, right? Yeah. So, any other person with an idea? We can use Texas example for like showing how it will look like. So okay, I, I've, okay. I've You've created, got in one. Yeah. yeah, I've created a, a headline for it. Okay. Yeah. Beginning of the education program, Wikimedia in residence experience. So you see this is something that you can use. So you click on draft your newsletter article. So once you click, you come across this source code. Now for most people who don't know how to uh, work with source code, it's always scary. You feel like, no, I can't do this, and you just close mm -hmm. the page. <laughs> so, but it's very easy. What you just need to do is, I think we, we even made like a video to guide uh, people on how to submit their newsletter article. But yes, let's be practical. Now your article title is here, right? And then there's an equal to. So it's just telling you, please provide your article title. And then the next thing you want to do is, you can see this box. Within this box is where your article title will be placed. So you replace this content here with the name of the article. Yeah, you can. You can replace that box or else, you know, it's just a placeholder. Like it's going to use the same title that you have already used for. Yeah. So it, if you do not want to use a new title, it's just going to take the, 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 one, the one that you used for the headlines. Yeah. So the next thing you also want to do is to just provide your username because uh, we use the username to identify you when you're publishing your newsletter. So you can replace this content with your username. So you replace this content within this box. Like you have to remove this um, source code and then impute your username. Can you do that just to make it practical? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. So we also have this part that talks about the summary of what uh, you want to share. Because um, when we want to um, create publicity for your story on Facebook, because we have a Facebook page called Wikipedia plus education. You can try to sign um, to like our page right now before you leave this space. <laughs> yes, yeah, so that you can always get uh, stories, right? So uh, we always uh, we are always keen on the summary parts because we want to be able to understand your story within uh, a short period of time, right? So uh, some of the points that you need to focus on when you are trying to create your summary is that uh, you like um, go over some of these questions and try to provide answers to them. Now, the first part says, did you arrange a collaborative project with an educational institution? Now, that's a question. And you also like need to look for how that question would align with the activity that you want to publish. The next um, point is, have you involved teachers or students in this program? Now, why we are trying to um, identify this question is to help you build up your summary. Now, if you have worked with teachers, you'll be able to easily respond to this, right? And if you have worked with students, then the next thing you want to do is you um, identify your audience, like the participant that you've engaged. Now, the next point is what learning do participants, whether students, teachers, or Wikimedians, have by participating in this program? Does it advocate for open education in your region? Now, these are the uh, points that helps you build up your summary. And we have some newsletter already, so I would show you a practical of what it looks like, the summary parts. 
No, um, yeah. I'll just ask, like always look into the instructions that have been provided in the template. So if you see that here the instruction is mentioned that write your summary inside the translation tag. So one thing that the newsletter team always advocates about is that you can submit newsletter in any language you want. Huh? It doesn't need to be English because we're also providing like, that's how you're using the translate tag. So that if someone provides a newsletter in a different language, yeah. someone else can also come there and contribute and you know, translate it to a, like a, from a non-English language to an English language as well. So always read the instructions that are provided there. So we are trying to be helpful in that way. Um, uh, and and these are just the guiding questions like like Nicola was mentioning. These guiding questions are helping you to like you know, think and thinking out loud, like what exactly do I want to write about my program or the activity I, I do, I'm doing? Is editor turn the same as like an education program? So trying to like imagine sure. like, a deeper way. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So once you've been able to identify this summary. Then, uh, just like what Silash said, uh, you don't really need to publish in English because, like, we have the translation tags that helps us um, help other people who are not from your uh, language community to understand in their own language. Then we have this part that talks about media. Now, uh, you know, when you add visuals to uh, a document or to any story, it makes it increase. It builds interest of people. It captivates them. They want to see more. They want to read more. So for some people, they might not even read the contents of the newsletter. But once they see a picture, then they automatically have like an understanding of what the story is saying, right? So it's always encouraged that you add a picture to your newsletter. And uh, then we also have the caption. Now, they said, write your caption inside the translate tag. Now, this caption is for the media file that you are adding, right? The caption helps us better understand because uh, we also have people who, uh, who have like, um, is it visual impaired now or something? Uh, so if you use the caption, we can also like use alternate text to help them, um, even if they can't see the picture, they can like um, have like this easy text to speech or yeah that helps them to um, understand that yeah the, there's a picture here that explains this right so we also encourage you to like um, use hashtags or help us uh, connect with you by including your social media and do's so uh, because when we share your story on our facebook page we also like to like tag you so that you know that, yes, we've mentioned your story, and then it helps you also uh, drive traffic to your social media and do. So, and then we have the space that talks about the description, the full description of your newsletter. So remember, we have the summary, and then we have uh, the description section where you have to provide more details about your newsletter. And then, uh, I think that's all about it, yeah. So I just realized that we have some problem with the template. I realized that the guiding questions which are supposed to be under description okay. is under summary. <laughs> so the summary is just about, you know, so the summary is just about like providing a brief summary of like what exactly happened in this program or in this newsletter. What exactly are you trying to mention in this newsletter? And the, the guiding questions that we have provided will actually help you to write the description of the newsletter. So we'll make that change. I am noticing it after like a long time because the, the newsletter team has been such, doing such wonderful work that I'm not like spending that much of time into the newsletter. So it's a good way to like see that. So I'll make changes to it. Uh, but Bukola, once we have five minutes, can we also show the newsletter in the... Uh, <laughs> Oh, what's that uh, visual editor format as well? Visual? visual editor. So this is the source editor. Yes, we can yes, search. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yeah. Okay, so before I start explaining this part, I also showed you some of the newsletters that we are about to feature on our Facebook page. So. Yeah, it usually looks like. So it usually looks like this, but it's blank because you don't have a story. 
So can you just go back? Oops. The language. Okay, so for every month in education, we have volumes. We have so many issues already because like the newsletter has been in existence before now. But yeah, we are trying to create more awareness about it. So we have, currently we are on volume 12. You said? The volume 12 means it has been for the last 12 years. Okay, yes, it has been on for the last 12 years. Then we are currently on issue 4. And then this is for the month of April. Now, if you click on this, I don't think this has an image. Okay. I don't, okay. <laughs> okay, fine. So this is introducing Wikipedia to Kusa language teacher. Did I get that? So if you look closely, you can see that the summary is very short. It's not so detailed. Then the summary here says, teachers of the Kusal language from three districts were introduced to Wikipedia and its sisters project. This was part of a series of work organized by Kusal Education Oversight Committee for teachers its pilots in its pilot school. Okay, so this is what a summary looks like. Now, I don't need to read the entire newsletter before having like an idea of what it says, right? So this is what we would like you to also like adopt if you want to like um, create a summary. So, uh, and uh, this is uh, the newsletter in the translated version. What language? In Korean, in Korean. <laughs> yeah. So this is what it looks like. And uh, the whole essence of this session is to encourage you to feature your stories on the education newsletter. Uh, we currently have, I don't have the statistics, but I would say for a fact that our Facebook page is the most active, aside Wikipedia Weekly, yeah. For those people here. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's, the, it's one of the most active Facebook page. And yeah, I have two minutes, I know. <laughs> and uh, we have also like help people connect, uh, get more friends, get more followers on their various Facebook uh, page, especially for user groups and individuals that are carrying out various activities and programs. So that is all about the newsletter. And I'll be sharing the link to this page on the Telegram group, and I also like share our Facebook page for you to follow us and also read from other people's stories why you also try to build up your own stories for us to feature. Thank you. Sorry, I, I will just add my last, uh, last sent, like last statement, yeah. Not last statement, I'm not, this is not my last statement. Yeah, sorry. Uh, so you can also subscribe this newsletter to your talk page. So it's not just about Facebook. So if you're not on Facebook, where can I find it? You can subscribe it to your talk page. So you have to click on subscribe. And uh, we have like list of subscribers. Some folks have all like subscribed it to their community village pumps as well. So you can have it in your, like you just have to add your name. It has like the instruction. You can also add your email address. We are not sending your know, newsletter over email address anymore. So I'll remove that but you can add to your talk page. So that's, that's my last yeah. question. Yeah. Uh, so earlier it used to be sent as like a similar digest. So the digest that you are seeing uh, in the on the uh, page, you you would get a similar digest on your uh, email, like when you subscribe to the uh, education newsletter. But it's also about like handling the data. So we do not want to like you know use that by a third party agency because we are using like Mailchimp or some other. Uh, so we stopped doing that, uh, but. You, you can also get the education newsletter if you have subscribed to the education mailing list. So every month when the newsletter gets published, uh, one of the members from the newsletter team, I think it's Anthony, yeah. who sends uh, the newsletter to the education mailing list. I can show you the link of the education mailing list. I'll put this link on the Telegram, like how to, uh, how to, uh, 
how to subscribe to the mailing list as well yeah <laughs> Questions? Practicals? Okay. Uh, I can say that this is also very useful for your boards uh, and uh, teams because when they are asking, and what exactly do you do in your educational team? I can just link newsletter, <laughs> entries to the newsletter, and also like final uh, year report, annual reports. Uh, when they ask me, what did you do on September 2002 or something, it's very, very useful. Also, I have some issues, but I can assure that the team is very friendly. And when I broke something, uh, they like, no worries, we will fix this. <laughs> so. Clara is one of the most active contributor to the education. Is we should have like a round of applause. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good way to also like highlight your work, highlight your volunteers, the teachers, you know, like who uh, collaborate with you in supporting the programs, the students. So it's a good platform for them to like see that their work being highlighted in a global newsletter because this is not a regional newsletter. It's like a global newsletter which goes to like, if you look at the uh, subscription, I think it goes to somewhere around like 273 members subscribe, have subscribed to this one. And I think we get somewhere around like 500, 600 page views every month. Some, something very different from the individual articles, but this page at least gets like 600, 700 page views a month. Yeah.